And here we go. It's very nice to see you today, Amy. I think we go back. Gosh, you know, I was going to think about, think about, I wonder if you have a better idea of when that was. I, I visited your, you know, Amy Eltree studio in yeah. North Canton, Ohio. It was a real going concern. You had me out for a workshop. I was so impressed. Do you have any idea of when that might have been? Well, that was our third, no, fourth location. And I opened that one in 1999. And I do think that it wasn't all that long yeah. after I opened that I had you there. I think maybe I'd been there a year or so. Yeah. I and then my invited book came you out, to come. My book came out in 99. Okay. So I'm guessing it was probably like the next year, 2000. Yeah. That you yeah. 2000, 2001 would be my guess. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. We were just children then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Although, when you think about it, 2000 doesn't sound like that long ago. To me, that's like last year. But then I realized that's actually <laughs> been like 23 years. So, yeah. yeah. So um, before we take a look at your art, um, I would love to know how you became Amy Lindenberger. How are how did you like where did you come from? How did this happen? <laughs> Where did I come from? Okay, well, um, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in drawing from the University of Akron. Always knew I wanted to be an artist. In fact, people would ask me, well, you're going you're gonna to get a Bachelor of Fine Arts in drawing. What are you going to do with that? And I'd say, well, I don't know. I like to draw. You know? so, so that's how it all started. But in, in college, we drew... In the drawing program, we drew in pretty much any medium you could possibly imagine, but it was all black and white, gray values, maybe brown on a good day, but really didn't do any color work. Now, as part of my degree, I had to take painting courses, and so I was exposed to working in color, but I did not have, they did not have a dedicated color theory class at that point. So as a result, when I graduated, I was doing some freelance illustrating, but it was all in black and white. And one day, a man that owned one of the agencies I worked for said, you know, you've been here a while, and I really like your style, and I think I can really get you some better jobs. But I just realized I don't have any samples of your color work. And I was smart enough, even at that point, to know you don't say, well, that's because I don't have any. <laughs> so, so I thought, OK, so how am I going to work in color? Um, and I loved the soft pastel, chalk type pastel. And I tried that, but I can't deal with the dust. Yeah. Just cannot deal with the dust. So I had fooled around with color pencil in high school, but not really um, specific instruction. And at that time, of course, my mindset was, well, that's not a fine art medium. You don't work in colored pencil for a fine art. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe let's go back and try that again. And it was a lot of trial and error. It was really a lot of trial and error because this would have been 1981. Oh, wow. There weren't any books on the subject um, no, nothing no. and so everything that I learned to do with them was just trial and error and when the first book real book came out uh Bette Borgeson's The Colored Pencil, Colored Pencil I was like ecstatic because I thought oh good maybe she has some information in there that will and and you know a lot of what she did I was already doing but it was just happenstance that I fell into it you know and then I stuck with it because I found that by varying the surfaces that I used and the techniques I used I could make colored pencil imitate a lot of other things and as an illustrator that was really helpful especially a young illustrator who didn't have much money I just had to learn how to do different things with one medium and you know that's why you're so wow that explains so much I mean because you are so um experimental and so willing to try something you know I'm yeah. like I found Prismacolor and I found Stonehenge and you know literally <laughs> 40 years later I that's still all I use that's but so you were just like oh well you know let's try this and this and this yeah. and this and this and, and that was just definitely necessity is the mother of invention I right. 
they'd give me a job and I'd say, okay, how am I going to do that with colored pencil? And so then I would start trying different things. And yeah. So that's where it all went. And then, and then, and then let's jump to, so how did you um, like the studio? T tell us about any L tree studio. I think that's okay. Well, um, it's actually the Linden tree. Oh, that's right. That, yeah, that's right. That's okay. And um, what happened was, well, I got married and a couple of years later, I found myself divorced with a one and a half year old and a three year old. And I realized I was not going to be able to make enough money doing my freelance illustrating and pay for childcare. That was not going to work. I had to find a way to do this at home. And I had to find a way I could still do some illustrating, but I really needed to, to supplement my income mm -hmm. with teaching. So uh, I had done a display at, back in that era. Uh, shopping mall art shows were big. Oh, so I don't know if you remember that. But anyway, um, we had you, you paid for a booth and they had a show for five days, four days, whatever. And um, just on a whim, I put out a sheet of paper. One woman stopped and she said, I find this really intriguing. I would love to learn how to do this. Did you ever think about teaching? Well, that was a happy accident because, yes, I very much have thought about that. So I just put a sheet of paper out on a table and said, if anybody would be interested in lessons, just put your name and phone number and We'll see what happens. Well, I got probably 20 some names. So then I had to sit down and start writing a class plan for how I was going to approach this. And then I, once I had it in place and I called them all, you know, and out of that 20 some, I think eight, I think eight actually did it. But I thought, okay, it's a place to start, sure. you know. And right. so initially it was just classes in the basement of my townhouse apartment. It was nothing fancy, but word of mouth it just spread like wildfire and within a year I had a, lo a separate location and then it just kind of kept growing from there I mean people were color pencil was so new to people in our area at that point that they were just like oh my gosh this is where has this been you know um and so they just were really excited about it and I was the only one doing it so, <laughs> so I sort of cornered the market there you know <laughs> Yeah, but you, I remember being so impressed because uh, you had students that were like years old at that time. So it must have been, yeah, I, mean, I know that, the, I mean, it wasn't like, so, so I, I mean, I would have a class, you know, maybe six week class and then that they were done, right? But you oh, had these people yeah. that were just like going in, you had figured, you had <laughs> figured out coming. how to have students, you know, so it's, it's a tribute to your teaching and to your sort of pushing them so that they were continuing to learn. That's what was so impressive to me was that you, you, you continue to have stuff for them to, you know, to learn. Yeah, thank you. I really, it, it, I realized very quickly that it was not going to work to just have a six, a, an eight week class. That was not going to work. We did that and then they needed to pro progress onto something else. And then, the, you know, so eventually it sort of evolved into levels. You right. Know, you would have beginning, intermediate, advanced level. I remember you telling me about it and I was just like so impressed and so blown away. Like, how did she do this? Like, it just was so beyond uh what I would have done or what I ever did <laughs> well this is what will happen when you when you know you have to support your kids you know, yeah, yeah pay the bills so I, I kept trying to think of additional things that we could do yeah. to keep the ball rolling yeah. you know keep people interested and in, and in, and in, and in encourage the learning process because I I really I had a, a body of students who were doing fantastic work, fantastic work, you know, uh, so I really wanted to encourage that. But that all of that has like, is still serving you today, I feel like, you know, all of that instruction and, um, you know, experimentation and, and all of that. I mean, you're, you're like, I don't know, you're sort of like, I mean, to me, a pioneer, you did almost the entire, well, we're going to, we're going to go over to Padlet, but, um, you know, well, in fact, let's do that now. Let me see. What do I do? I share my screen and we go to your Padlet. 
Okay, so now you should see um, all of your pictures, right, at Padlet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I was going to say was, I mean, you're almost like exclusively are almost our only author for this whole series of CP surfaces. I mean, the only <laughs> the only one that you didn't was um drafting the film. drafting film. Gretchen yeah. Did. Yeah, like, Gretchen I mean, did that one. Yeah. I mean it, it's something to be able to say, yeah, I work on clayboard, but to be able to write a book on clayboard and have sound that and black paper, I mean it's a little bit nuts, Amy. I don't even know how you do it. Uh you, well, then, <laughs> Yeah, then what do you do? You 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 come up with the best selling color pencil book ever. Um, oh, gosh. the colors workbook. And um I we probably should look at your work first, but I just I just can't help but talk about these things because it's just so amazing that um you are are you seeing the colors workbook right now, by the way? Sometimes that's yes. okay. Yes. So let's just go ahead, since I'm looking at this, let's just go ahead and jump to I don't know how to get back to Padlet. Oh, there we go. Um, just to jump to it, like, how did you come up with this, you know, color theory? The color right? thing? Yeah. Yeah, that was interesting because, like I said, my training was in black and white, gray values, that kind of thing. And I graduated having a really good understanding of composition and design and value. But color to me was um, kind of a vast, confusing wilderness. I mean, my color work. It's not that I couldn't tell the difference between a red and a green and a blue, you know, and a, a darker and lighter. But when you started talking about things, this is bright or this is dull or this is warm or this is cool. I just was kind of like, I don't know. And so my color work initially, I felt was not not exactly coloring book level. I mean, like. I would think when I say coloring book, what I mean is put this color here, put this color here. Like it raw color. That basic, but it really wasn't rich in my opinion. And so I knew that I needed to learn more about color. So I sort of set out on this mission to teach myself color, which was not an easy test because all of the information I was finding was geared towards painters and designers. It wasn't geared towards colored pencil artists. And it's not that the principles are that much different. It's just that there's a translation process involved between information geared towards painters to colored pencil that it threw me off a little bit. So then I was real appreciative uh, from my students' perspective about how that was a stumbling block for them. What I found so often in my classes was that students were waiting for me to tell them what color to use <laughs> they could not see it they could not figure out how to get it mm -hmm. and I thought what we need are not formulas we need a strategy for how to look at a color and determine what its hue is what its value is what its intensity is so that they can mix it themselves right. Yeah. And then they can move on to using these other colors that I call convenience colors because they have a better understanding of what those colors are and how they relate to the color wheel. So how, so how long did it take for you to, to I because mean, obviously you didn't write the book until you had figured all of this out and had used it for a good long time, I'm sure. So how long roughly did it take for you to sort of, you know, coalesce this all into a system? I would say it was 20 years. Oh! <gasps> And the reason I say that is because, because once I started figuring it out, I would teach it to my students in little workshops, but where I, they were kind of guinea pigs. I felt sorry for them in a way because they would I would do an exercise and I'd think, well, that was dumb. That was a dumb exercise. Why did I have them do that? So we're not doing that. We're going to do this instead, you know, so it kind of evolved over the years. And I really didn't have it to a place where I felt confident presenting it to a publisher <laughs> for a long time. And even at that, you know, I'm I'm kind of a, a, a shy Midwestern girl. And uh, the idea of approaching a publisher to me was just a little scary. And then you had me write these other books. And then I thought, well, maybe Anne would like to do this. And so that's how it all happened. 
That's and awesome. boy, yeah. that hit, neither of us knew. I mean, I had a pretty good inkling that it was going to yeah. be popular, but we did not know how incredibly popular this book well, is. Well, you know that my joke to you and to everybody I talked to was, of course, I'm going to write this book and only six people are going to buy it, you know, because it's a lot of work. I mean, there's no getting around it. It's a lot of work. Uh -huh. So you have to really want to learn color. Yeah, to, to commit to doing the work. And it's so different from anything else yeah. I've published that I just thought, I don't know. I yeah. don't I don't want to make you think that I know there's a big market for it. I didn't know if there would be. Yeah, you know? I thought it was gonna be, I thought it was gonna be a good seller, but man, I mean telling you, for those of you listening, it just um it is still popular, but it completely flew off. The shelves for I think a solid six months I mean it was just crazy yep you done good there Amy all right thank so, you um now we're gonna talk a little bit oh man all right it looks to me like the stuff on top of the padlet maybe is older work yes I did start with older okay. so cause, uh, yeah because I remember these from from days gone by um this right. beautiful calm before the storm now you did you live in um you live well you mostly live in Ohio North, in the in North Canton is that right mm -hmm. mostly in northeastern Ohio mm -hmm. and then but part of the time you live in in Gettysburg Pennsylvania yeah Gettysburg Pennsylvania so is that how you got onto the uh, yeah what the happened North? was um I've always had a very serious interest in the American Civil War because my dad was a big Civil War buff. Okay. And uh, we would visit Civil War battlefields. And I wasn't particularly interested in the battle scenes and the generals and all of that part. What I was interested in was how this war between Americans impacted the average person. And so I began researching and doing the, this series of images. And initially, I was just doing them, you know, in my North Canton setting. But over the summer, my husband and I would go to various fine arts shows, and we would uh, we would set up a booth. And we noticed that we always did, you know, better in areas that had a strong Civil War. Oh, right, 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 right. Presence. So one day we had done a show in Gettysburg and he was out for a walk and he saw this little gallery space for rent or this storefront for rent. And he said, what if we did this instead? And I laughed because he said, did you forget that we live 320 miles away from here? You know, and he said, well, we wouldn't if we treated it like we do these shows, we wouldn't have to be there all the time. You could just be open when you wanted to. We, would we wouldn't have to keep schlepping this stuff all over the place. We'd have a permanent location. We could just try it for a year and see how it goes. And that's what happened. We tried the gallery for a year. I was only open on weekends and it wasn't every weekend. It was like maybe every other weekend a month. Um, and particularly in the tourist season and then it just kind of grew from there it was popular and we eventually got ourselves a little efficiency apartment and then you know we just started doing the gallery and so I did that for 10 years I had that gallery by myself for 10 years and then I turned it into a co-op gallery because frankly it was just getting to be a little bit more work I was right. spread it a little too thin and um so then we ran it for another five years as a co-op gallery with myself and five other artists. Um, and then, as luck would have it, we closed right before the pandemic, not knowing the pandemic was coming, uh, just because foot traffic had kind of dropped off. And wow. I'm really glad because right. that would have been bad. Well, I, I want to talk about this, but not from the Civil War aspect, just from the so many things. The color, I mean, the color is just so vibrant and beautiful. So the the beautiful, beautiful blues, the beautiful greens, you know, anybody who's tried to work to, to do landscapes and color pencil knows um, 
you know, green, greens are difficult in color. Greens pencil. are tough. Yes, they're they really, are. They're really, really hard. They're, they're so, they're too green too often, you know, so then you have to add some blues and then they can go too blue and you have to add some yellows and they can go too yellow. It's just, it's just, they're yes. a real problem. You they're know, and the trees in the background are just so incredible. I mean, that light coming through those trees to me just feels very Amy Lindenberger, first of all. <laughs> it's just so beautifully done. I'm going to guess that you have a little bit. I'm going to use the mouse. Uh, can you see my mouse? I don't know if you yes. Can. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So my guess is that you use just a little bit of real golden yellow around these shadows to uh, to, to. Well, I know you did this ages ago. <laughs> no, I, I have a pretty clear memory actually of a lot of that. I did. I used uh, did some Prismacolor goldenrod around okay. those edges. That um, though, that yellow on the edge just makes the glow like glow. It's just so awesome. Thank Do you, you remember your trick on the greens? How to you know what what it was that made those greens so awesome in the back, so perfect in the in the background? Yeah. Um, really, I just kind of kept them uh, real limited value range and very muted, very dulled greens. Yeah. All things like. Um, uh what do I want to say green, uh, green, brown ochre green. and olive green and those maybe, kind of things that were very sepia. muted yeah, yeah maybe some sepia or black grape to kind of you know yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but then in the foreground you did these luscious I'm alive blackberry bushes yeah. um you know without any hesitation and that those are beautiful too Thank you. That was a real challenge because I really, what I, the whole thing is assembled from like seven different reference photos that I took. The whole scene is made up, you know, um, but I did refer, you know, refer to actual reference photos, right, right, right. but then I had to keep kind of tweaking the colors to get them. I wanted there to be a certain amount of detail in the in the foreground, and I wanted it to, to sort of lead you back to the soldiers. And I wanted the ones on top to be yellower to convey more sunlight, and the ones below to be bluer underneath. Um, so that was m many more vibrant colors, many more vibrant colors. Yeah. It's just a wonderful piece. I mean, I, I don't remember the actual first time I saw it, but I do remember absolutely loving it and we're going back probably about the beginning of the magazine you know around 2000 yes so right yeah. yeah now tell me about the writing on this one or just <laughs> tell me the story on this well this is um rose o'neill greenhouse she was a confederate spy she lived in washington at the time the civil war began and she was when her husband was living he was a government official and so she she knew all the right people she was a widow by the time the war started, but she knew all the right people so she could entertain a lot and she could get information a lot. And a man who was preparing to leave the United States Army and join the Confederate Army contacted her about forming a spy ring of women because they would be less obvious than men. And that writing is the code, the cipher code that he gave her to send her notes. And it's actually, she, there are two of her handwritten messages in the National Archives using that cipher code. Wow. So that's the code. How did you, I, how did, is this on sanded paper? How did you, how did <laughs> no, you it's on a It's on a very large sheet of uh, white museum board. Yeah. How did it's you a do very the, large story. How did you do the light drawing on top of the dark? No, it's a uh, oh the, oh this characters you mean? Yeah. Um, I erased out the shapes, and then I inserted other colors. You erased out the code. Yeah, I erased out the shapes from the dark background, and in the dark, and and I should say the dark background of her clothing was not fully developed at okay. that point it was at a much lighter stage all right and then I erased it out and then I worked around it you know oh my god so much work oh it was I a mean, tremendous today, amount yeah today you would do it on pastel mat and you could do the right. lettering on top you know right right couldn't right. do that in the olden days no in the olden <laughs> <laughs> You know, 
I guess I just didn't realize how many landscapes you don't know. This is colored pencil with graphite under. Oh, so on clayboard. That's, right. that's the clayboard. Yes, yeah. that's the clayboard technique. Yeah. Yeah, that all came about because I was looking <laughs> when I had my shop in Gettysburg at a group, a local group of artists who would go out in the field and do plein air work. But I was the only colored pencil artist. And so in two, two hours, they're doing these beautiful paintings, and I'm doing this. And I thought, I need a different method here. So that's how the clay board came about. Because what I would do would be take the clay board panels and coat them with powdered graphite. And then it was a subtractive technique, erasing out the lights. Yes. Yeah adding in the darks but it was all done with graphite and then I would spray it with a, I used to use workable fixative but now I use matte finish it works a lot better spray it with that and then the color really is just applied very loosely and blended with solvent uh, odorless mineral spirits and it's this basic wow. stain over the panel so is that a similar uh, procedure yes. as this one same mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, we can learn more about that <laughs> in one of these books, the Clayboard book. Yes, in the Clayboard okay. book. Right. You can. Awesome. I don't think, is this one in the book? I don't remember this one. Uh, I think it's right inside the cover page. Oh, is it? Well, yeah, you know, that's is. really cool. I mean, the, the, the you can kind of do a plain air sort of thing is like, yeah. you know really nice because normally it's just a sketch right if you're gonna right right if you're gonna do anything quickly in color pencil I, I mean to me this is one of the most beautiful sensitive horse portraits I've ever seen I absolutely adore it thank uh, you I had a wonderful time doing that piece I really enjoyed it you, wow uh and it's not like you do a lot of horses no, but when I was doing my Civil War work, I got into doing horses because yeah. of that. And, and I found that I really enjoyed doing horses. So I looked for, for a while, I did ex looked for excuses to do horses. Oh, it's just so beautiful. It's like there's not, there's not a wasted line. Like there's not too much. It's not overdone. It's just exactly right. And then the look in his eye or her eye, whichever. Ah, oh, this makes my makes gives me goosebumps. Uh, but this one, okay, this one, everybody's already heard what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I I have not seen this before today, and um, I just think it's really cool. And I see that it is watercolor pencil on cold press watercolor paper on cold press paper. Yeah, yeah. Lot. well I can see the texture in there and right. then plus just plain old color pencil right so yeah, the accents wish... the accents are all done the details and the accents are done with regular color pencil but there's not much that's been added it's almost all watercolor pencil yeah I can kind of see like these grasses probably and these grasses uh -huh. here and the they detail on the, the windmill and the windmill in the, wind meal, in, mm -hmm. the, in the whatever they're called um, and it's only a seven by nine. It's, yeah, it's a not nice big. little piece. Mm -hmm. So if you were here early, you heard me say this to Amy. Amy, would you teach this? Because we don't have any classes on watercolor pencil. And yeah. it's gorgeous. It's so atmospheric. And Amy said, sure. And I did. Um, hey, I forgot there's a chat here. How come I'm not seeing that? Um, yeah. usually I see oh yeah you should be able to see it too no I don't see anything yeah I, but I wonder why well people might not know I hope that everything is going okay oh well, they might have changed something on zoom they're always changing oh uh, yeah yeah I, I usually see like a little notification if somebody has asked a question or Right. You know, that sort of thing, but I don't see that. 
I'm clicking on chat right now to see if I can get anything to happen and nothing is up. Huh. Oh, wait, I see it now. My camera was covering it up. I see one question. The chat says disabled. Well, why? Thank you, whoever. Oh, Sonia. Thank you. Um, why is the chat disabled? <laughs> like I said, they're always changing things. Okay. I think you can put something in the chat now. Uh, or you can also put things in. Um, now, I do see something show, showing up under Q&A. Yeah, so that was Samia saying the chat was disabled, but I think, oh, I've, I see. I think I've enabled it now. I see. And okay. so anyway, if you have okay. a question at any time, you can um, I, either put it in. The, oh, there, there's somebody in the Q&A trying here if it works. Love your beginning conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're a little gonna make me blush but... again. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Okay. Oh well. You know, like I said, we 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 were good girls. <laughs> All right. So anyway, awesome. I look forward to windmill it done. You know, um, something like that. Like, how long do you think it actually takes you to draw something a seven by nine with the, that sort of atmospheric thing? Because like I'm, what I'm thinking is you could do that on blue paper, right? You could do it on because that's on yellow paper, right? No, it's on watercolor. It's on white watercolor paper. Oh, you're kidding me. No, huh? Oh no, it's God. it's on it's on uh, cold press watercolor paper. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, um, but no, they, it's not very time consuming. You can do that whole piece probably. And I might have it, to take that class. I'm quite excited about that. I mean, yeah, that that's really, really cool. I mean, because I played a teeny tiny bit with watercolor pencils, but they kind of give me the highs because then you have to do brushes and brushes make me break out. So, um, but I, I feel like you might be able to help me <laughs> with that. So I might be able to. I feel a little bit like you do about brushes. So I don't use them a tremendous amount. And I yeah. certainly, I've always told my students, I certainly am not a professional watercolorist. Yeah. Definitely not. Well, but that's I a, can that's make a, the watercolor pencils do what I want them to do. And that is just beautiful. I would just be able to do, I just love that. Okay. Now, and then you're also, of course, an absolute pro on working on, why won't that open? Uh, work on black. Oh, this is also one of my favorites of yours. Oh, the shine on that, the tip of that. Oh, I just absolutely love that shine. The sheen on her um, top of her head. The, it's just beautiful. Do you have anything yeah. to say about this? That was a fun one because of all the different textures. I just really enjoyed the different textures in this. And one of the things, I mean, you know, the horse is done on black too. Oh yeah. And one of the things I particularly like about black paper is you don't have to use a lot of color. Most people think you would have to use a lot of color because it's black. You really don't. You simply have to get the white, the, the reverse grisaille, the white underpainting in place. And then the other thing I like is how they just kind of emerge from the surface. I really love that effect of how they just kind of blossom from the surface. And like out of the shadows, like out right. of the shadows right. comes a drawing. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I mean, yes. You can do that. I, I When I have tried working on black. And what I do is I go to look at your your book. You know, mm -hmm. before that, you had the kit with the strawberries. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. And so right. I would look at that kit. Mm -hmm. But I think I always overworked the white. So I had too much white down. And, oh. then, um, yeah. and then I would struggle with that. And then I would start to get mud. And then I'd be like, how come I'm not Amy Lindenberger? And I would. <laughs> uh, so, you know, that's how it is. Um, I but I, maybe my all-time favorite piece that you've done on colored paper is this one right here. Oh, my gosh. You know, you, Amy, I can't tell you the number of times I have looked at this eye. It is perfection. Oh, thank you. That was another fun one. I love doing that portrait and the glow that you could get in the skin tones on that um, toned paper. That thing was was just 
exciting from beginning to end, work in developing it. Now, I know this is in that book, the colored paper book, but just give me an idea here. Give us an idea. Like, is this area that's so smooth and beautiful, is that with a sharp pencil or a dull pencil or something in between? It's all, all sharp pencil, all sharp pencil. Yeah. Tiny strokes, sharp pencil. The good old fashioned way. Yeah. Sharp point <laughs> scumbling. Yep. 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 That's the, oh, that's the skin. I just love it. I love it. 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 I, I would, I'd be so proud of that if that were mine. Now this one, of course, is a showstopper always. It's, so amazing that's on colored paper and what is the paper what color the paper is a color called tobacco and you can see it showing through a little bit you see that that sort of point on the top of the bridge of the nose yeah right in there now you were there before now okay come down. there you go yeah and from there over to the left just a little bit that's the paper color showing okay. through. yeah yeah it looks like tobacco now, yeah. this, these whiskers are so beautifully dark. Is that just white pencil? Yeah, it's just white Prismacolor. And it's Prismacolor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't use Stabilo or... or... No, it didn't. At that point, I, at that point I, I don't even know if I was totally aware of some of the other whites that were available. But because there's not a tremendous amount of white in it, I was able to do what I needed to do with the Prismacolor white. Do you, can you give me a sense? This is a seven by nine. It's in the um, CP Services colored paper book, right? But yeah. give me a sense of how long this, this tell, give me a sense of how long this would take you if you weren't having to stop and scan it constantly for a book. Cause like that really <laughs> yeah. interrupts Yeah, that everything. does slow you down quite a yes. bit. Um, well, I did work pretty fast, so I would say probably with the color paper, the color paper cuts down on the number of hours of work because you've got that color creating the ground. I would say probably about six hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a, a seven by nine? Yeah. I. I like I'm imagining if I did this with white paper on Stonehenge with my Prismacolors to get this level of contrast. I mean, I'm I'm going to say upwards of 30 hours. Yeah, I would believe that. There's something I do in the beginning of the book where I do a little, little composition of pumpkins. And I did the same composition on white paper, mm -hmm. orange paper, brown paper and a complementary color and I compare the number of hours that each one took me the colored paper when you use one that has a color that's contained in your value range it just cuts down on the time so much and that comes from working as an illustrator and I had oh, to man. produce things on a deadline <laughs> And I had to figure out the most efficient way to do everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, like I said, it served you well. Now, um, I want, gosh, there's some here I haven't even seen. So, well, I mean, this is also, oh, this is pastel mat. So this is the first one. Yeah, that's pastel, pastel mat. mat. Mm -hmm. A little seven by nine. This probably took you four hours. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Yeah, probably, yeah, I figured. Yeah, something like that. Because the pastel matte color is that sort of peachy color that you see in the middle sky. There okay. you go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I, okay. Yeah. The colored, okay, colored pastel matte. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really should um, take some of your classes because I have tried pastel matte twice. And again, I you know, I think I just like, I always try to make everything act as if it's Stonehenge and that I don't have yeah. to change anything. I just do my thing and now right. I have this new surface and it's supposed to just work. But right. You know, it doesn't. And then, it, yeah, and the paper doesn't want that. So, no. yeah. The paper yeah. wants something else. I mean, look at that glow. I mean, that's so Amy, isn't it? You're you're yeah. very, a very glowy person. Thanks. This has glow, like glow. This has glow. This has glow. <laughs> this has glow. This has glow. You're all about glow. I'm all about glow, I guess. 
yeah, you sure are. I, I've never really put that all together before. But this is really different. Yeah, that's really different. Any dreams? Come well, that's my that's my, another experiment I did where I took masa paper that is along the lines of Japanese rice paper. Oh, right. It's cottony on the front and it's very smooth on the back. And I crumpled it up <laughs> and I soaked it under water and then I spread it out. And what happens with masa paper, where you crumpled it, the folds sort of break the surface a little bit. And then when you paint over it with watercolor or in my case, watercolor pencil, the paint seeps into the veining and you get this batik like yeah. effect. Okay. And then, so I do these backgrounds of different colors, get this batik effect. And then when it's done, I mount it on a piece of heavyweight illustration board. So okay. it's rigid because massive paper is very delicate. Mm. And to try to draw on it, you can't get any grab. So I mount it on a piece of heavyweight illustration board. And then you've got a surface. And once it's completely dry, you can just draw over like you would. So, so here's what's different about you. This is what makes you Amy Lindenberg. So most people would go, okay, mouse that paper. This will do this and this and this. But, oh, too bad you can't draw on it because it'll yeah. just tear. And so they go on to the next surface. They don't right. take that next step. I mean, yeah. this, is a, this is a jelly bean class you know, just waiting to happen. I mean, you know, just to show us how you do this. Yeah, it would be a hard thing for people to do with me. Yeah, no, no, a, but it's a demo. On a online setting, but I could show them how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and that I, would be interesting. Because this yeah. is to me like something that someone in class could just like, this is just, this could just be their thing. You know, they would just yeah. run with this. And oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love it. It's uh, very, so I'm assuming that you didn't have peonies to be uh, in mind to begin with. You kind of let what no. masa paper did dictate yeah. to you what it wanted to be. And and now when I do one of these, I have one of two approaches. The first one is just to put down colors that I like. I don't have anything in mind. I just put down colors that I like and then I wait for it to dry and I mount it and then I just stand it up, you know, and let it sit a while and think about what might develop out of there. My other one is my other method is to have something in mind and intentionally choose colors that I think would work well as right. a background. So I kind of have two different ways I go. Yeah. Yeah. You could show those in the jelly bean class, the ones that you've, yeah. you know, in the past, from the past. Yeah. Well, you were just a, I mean, you're a one woman encyclopedia of color pencil. Let's try this, miss. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> really, you are. So this is, uh, let me see. This is still life with lemons, color pencil, and pan pastel, a new medium. Yeah. On pastel matte. Yeah, and beautiful reflection here. I feel like this is in something. Is this in the? Is this the, also in the, in the pastel? pastel. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, give us your two or two or three minute. Uh, shoot, the, the word left my brain. Two or three minutes synopsis. Yeah, lecture or whatever on 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 successful use of pastel mat. Pastel mat. Like, um, is, it, is it the pencil brand? Is it the point? Is it the lay? I mean, what kind of, can you, can you sort of summarize a an overall general technique on how to be successful on pastel mat? You well, know, like I could say drafting film, you don't want to use a sharp point. You know, and you and you have to use a light touch, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, That's right, so right. Well, let's see. What can I say about that? Um, for everything I did on pastel mat or have done up to now, I have just used. No, that's not true. I have used a couple of different brands of pencils. Um, I tend to use sharp points for almost everything I do. I'm not really a dull point person. Okay. Um, but doesn't pastel mat really eat them up? 
Well, yeah, it does eat them up. Maybe, maybe what I should say is sharper points. I don't know that I use the absolute, you know, fine, fine needle point that I use on some things. Um, but I don't, I'm not much of a dull point person. Me either. Um, and, but I definitely on pastel mat for me, a dark to light layering approach works much better. And that's very counter to how I normally work on, on lighter surfaces. So that always takes me a little bit of an adjustment because I tend to lay in my darker colors first and then layer the lighter colors on top. So it actually works. Um, reminds me very much of when I used to do pastel. Oh, dark pastel. It, because it, that's how I worked with pastel. I did my darks first and then I layered my lighter colors on top. Yeah, of course um, that's what you do. Otherwise you get mud. Right, right. Yeah. So to me, it actually makes the colored pencil behave a lot more like pastel Yeah. than colored pencil. Yeah, so and it makes them more opaque, um, which is why, of course, you can put light on top of dark. Right on this surface that's a really great little synopsis i feel like like that helps even me um and i really have had i mean everybody has does this beautiful work on pastel mat and and i don't <laughs> i mean you haven't seen any of mine because you know it's not seeable oh i see okay um so like this, oh, I love this so much. The little puppy. My puppies. You, you, you taught this, you taught this guy right here, right? On a crew. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. See all those little puppies on pastel mat. So cute. Yeah. Is there anything you have, you struggle with drawing wise? Like you can really draw. Yeah, I don't, you know, that is my background. So drawing, drawing elements don't bother me at all I can't I, I think the thing I've always struggled with the most is and I talk to my students about it a lot trying to make things look random you know uh, patterning try to look random or or the effects of those trees for example so that you didn't get you know six dots placed a quarter inch apart and you know you, we just kind of fall into this here we here's where we're gonna put this, you know, and that business of trying to get, get randomness, get natural looking textures on things. That's probably if if there's anything I've struggled with over the years. That's that would be it. So yeah, not making making sure I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I think that's what makes things look realistic. Actually, is that random? Right, gotta yeah. get that randomness, and it's just we're not geared towards. Yeah. Most of us aren't geared towards doing things randomly. And you even like in hair, you know, I mean, that's kind of what's the difference between realistic hair and not realistic hair is the yeah yeah this is curving here, but they're not all completely curving exactly this way. Right. So I'm kind of curve that way, you know, and that's yeah right that randomness that makes realism so i've held off on this one because to be to me this is brand new it is brand new yeah. okay and it's not it's actually it's behind me. <laughs> on the oh. screen it's much lighter than what it really is it's actually quite a bit darker than that oh, yeah, i did this um yeah this is done on a sanded paper um in a aubergine color kind of a reddish purple color yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was a, I was teaching a workshop in a, a, at a, like a retreat center and, and the, uh, the housing was out in the woods and the day I arrived to unpack, it just poured, just absolutely <laughs> poured. And this was the scene as I looked out my back door into the woods. So I, I just, I always liked it. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is so, like, this is so wet right here. It is just so believably wet, you know, road. But then your little, it's sort of a Monet-ish, don't you think? Like yeah, I was white. really, yeah, I was really going for, I tend to, as color pencil artists do, I tend to over detail things. And I wanted to push myself to do something that was more impressionistic and not draw every single leaf yeah so, uh, that was kind of what that was all about 
Yeah, and you do such a beautiful job. I like to see it small. I mean, because it's like so amazing when you, I just realized that we've got questions and answers, so I'll go there next. But uh, when you see it very small, it's so realistic. It could be a photo, you know? And then, I mean, that's what I love about impressionism. You know, then you you get yeah. up close to it and you're like, oh, this is like, no, she didn't draw a single yeah. leaf. <laughs> you no, know? it's just little patches of color is yeah. all it is. There, There's really not a true leaf shape, maybe yeah. a couple over on the far left, but for the most part, it's just patches of color. No, you just, yeah, you really, there's no, no leaves there. It's color and value. That's it. Yep. It's very Monet. I just love it. Uh, let me get to these Q and A and these questions here. Let me see. Try and um, Okay, K Doer. Uh, learning more about Amy's variety of techniques. Amy, you are amazing with your solutions for using CP on a variety of surfaces. Amazing, Amy. Nice to hear from you, Kay. Uh, Lisa, don't know how to say that last name. I won't butcher it. Um, loved your class, Amy, on black paper. What I appreciate about your lessons is you teach techniques no one else teaches. I also took two of your color classes. So informative. Oh, yeah, Lisa. Oh, that was Lisa, Lisa Kendall. Yeah. yeah. And anonymous, just desire a list of all papers for all different pencil choices. Also, what methods have you found are, are effective or not on which papers, on which specifically? Um, yeah, that's a big old question, but I think, I wonder if we could make, make, turn that into a color magazine article. Um, I mean, it's a, it's kind of a big question. Are you seeing it? I mean, like, it's I'm all seeing, I'm seeing it. I'm just reading through it. Um, it's pretty subjective, right? But it does give me an idea about something for yeah um, but like for example like on black paper yeah. um my opinion um i love polychromos pencils but they're almost useless on black paper because mm -hmm. they're very translucent they let too much black show through no matter what you do with them so unless you're looking for something that's really muted I, do, I just stay away from them on black paper i would always go with prismacolor and um actually um pablo's karen dash pablo's because they're also quite have a lot of colors that are close to opaque so that's wow. one thing i get off the top of my head you know it's yeah that's a good i mean it's a good question it's just a big question it's it, it yeah it's a good question and the the next one is actually kind of similar about the oh. papers and techniques that work on which paper Will the glow lady provide a conference? <laughs> which is all these papers and techniques that work on which paper? Well, I mean, she wrote these books. <laughs> she spent a lot of time writing them. And they are probably the best way to learn about those, the paper. Um, paper and the techniques. Um, and, you know, if you get the digital version, they're not even expensive. So, um that's what yeah, because suggest. I mean, in each of the books, I do talk about the characteristics of the surface, right. like paper. I, you know, I, 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 I know for a fact. Like for example, I always worked on Stonehenge black. I really like Stonehenge black, but I, I can accept the Canson mutants. Um, and what was the other one? Um, the the new one, Fabriano black black, is a very nice surface, but doesn't have very good tooth. But then there's like art, art again, Strathmore art again. No, 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 no. All right. take you know what? You see this last comment? I think she's on to something. Create a booklet. Booklet. All the information yeah. you're discussing, because you truly do know your paper stuff. I mean, you know it. And you can make tons of money. Okay. Now, Suzanne, we want a guarantee on that, by the way. And we do. And yeah. It'll fly off the yeah. shelves. Yeah. You know, it's going to market them for us, right? So that we make <laughs> tons of money. Yes, yeah, Suzanne will let everybody on Facebook know that it's a fabulous book. But actually, I am writing Suzanne's name down. And yeah. I am, you know, reminding myself of that comment because, um, I actually think that's a, that that's a great idea. Just a little booklet rather than having an article. Mm -hmm. 
at, in the magazine. So, um, yeah, I think that those are great comments, folks. Um, but for those of you who really want to know how to do it, there is this, there are all these two people. And that's not why we do these connect. We really do do the connect because, um, you know, where else do you get to meet these uh, uh, artists um, in this sort of one-on-one -on -one way? Um, and I can see, I see here, connect with Amy on social media. So you can find out what she's doing next on Instagram or um I'm now, thankful. after this, after this connect, you get an email, and I believe, and it is an, um, maybe you already got it. I don't really know, but um, there's a definitely a link to this Padlet where you can come back and take a look, longer look at all of these um, beautiful pieces that Amy's put on here, and you can also take a look at this connect with so Amy with social media, and you can look at the new well, all this right? It's all there. And I see a couple more. Um, I'm about to work on black paper. This is Anna Terrellis. I'm about to work on black paper and appreciate knowing that the polychromos will not work well. I'll be using my trusty prismal colors. Thank you. Yeah, right. you're very welcome. Polychromos has a few colors that hold up pretty well, mostly in the yellow range, but most of their colors just like settle right into the paper. Wonderful pencils, just not for black paper. Have you ever used the Graphitint? I have. Are they I considered have. a color pencil? You know, I, I don't know. I, I think they are. I think the last time I looked, well, I mean, if you're talking about like Colored Pencil Society rules, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think they are. I think they are considered a color pencil. You know, very uh, few people do anything with that. I mean, uh, Elizabeth Patterson, when she started her rainscapes, she was using yeah. a lot of Graphitint for that, that subtle you know, right. gray backgroundy mm -hmm. look. Yeah. And yeah. I wonder why they're not used. Um, I don't know that this is the answer, but I do know that when I first investigated them and I looked at the light fastness ratings, oh. they were not good. Okay. So I got away from them because of that. Yeah. But now in the latest workbook, they've improved a oh. lot of them. The manufacturer has gone back and I think it's Derwent. Yeah, it's it? Derwent. Yeah, it's, Der it's absolutely They've Derwent. Gone back yeah. and reformulated them so that they, the range as a whole has really improved. As I can't far wait as to see possible. what Amy Lindenberger comes up with with Graphitins at some point in the future. <laughs> yeah, the, I have to add that to the list of yeah. things that I am going to do. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, this is about it. We we try to stick to an hour, and we're we're just about there. Um, unless, uh, do you have something you'd like to say, Amy? I have something. I, well, I you know the only thing I would say is that um, you know you look at uh, almost all, but maybe two of these pieces, two or three of these pieces, came about as a result of your asking me to write the books. <laughs> so. You know, I really have you to thank because, I mean, while I do use all these techniques, and I want you to think I didn't use them, um, I wouldn't probably have dug into them as deeply as I did. And I wouldn't, you know, yourself, it is different to do work for yourself than it is to teach someone else how to do something. You have to think about things in a completely different way. So I feel like having had to write the books, having had to teach people how to do these things. I understand them much better than if I were just working on yeah. them myself. So I thank you for the opportunities you have given me. Well, we are always grateful to be associated in any way with Amy Lindenberger, who is a star in my book and always has been. I mean, I can still see myself walking through a uh, your studio just being just so amazed like wow this woman has created a little color pencil powerhouse here in Ohio <laughs> somebody referred to it once as a cult <laughs> I would say oh you guys that's right I would be teaching and they would all know the answer to something that was the same answer and I would say oh you Amyites yeah that's I remember you called them they, you called them Mamieites, yes. Mamieites, that's great. All right, well, um, 
uh, oh, thank you, Suzanne, and and you are great too, smiley face. All right. Well, it was a wonderful hour, and um, Amy is actually coming to visit me in four days. She's driving over from Ohio to my little uh, town here in Southern Illinois, and um, Andy Burchette, who you might know from our classes, and Pearl de Chalane, who you might know from our classes, they're coming too, and the, the four of us are gonna have fun. Yes, yes. It's gonna we'll have fun. our little colored pencil party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everybody for coming. We'll see you soon, Amy, and right. Thank you, Anne. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye.